Man, they sure have been getting a lot of snow at Yellowstone lately. Yeah, there's a big snowstorm rolling through Yellowstone right now. This is the Old Faithful webcam, pointing towards Old Faithful and the wonderful Upper Geyser Basin. Hey there, once again, YouTube. My name is Ben Ferriolo, and I am dedicated to the responsible and accurate seismic monitoring of volcanic and tectonic hazard areas. First off, if you have not already, please bookmark my website. A link is provided under my email address in the description box below. It contains a great deal of information, including how to understand the many types of plots and charts people use, how to find, access, and analyze seismic data, and it also contains hundreds upon hundreds of seismic plots and images regarding a great many seismic events and swarms on many different pages. Trust me, you would be surprised as to what you find. In this video, I'm going to dive into an earthquake swarm that recently struck just barely north of Green River in southwest Wyoming. I know I already did a quick video on this, however, it was not as in-depth as I would have liked it, to, uh, liked it to be. Excuse me. I completed a blog post on my Quake Swarms blog on my website about two days ago or so. I would now like to show you guys something. Although I have already completed my personal analysis of the swarm, I totally forgot to check the sulfur dioxide emissions for this time frame. But don't worry, I will show it in the blog as I read through it. Also, remember the reported depths of these earthquakes in the Green River Swarm in Wyoming are extremely, severely wrong. Very wrong. They state some occurred up to negative 3.3 kilometers in depth, which in this location is 100% impossible. If you wish to see why, please continue watching this video or just go to the blog post right now. A link to it is posted in the description box below. So let's start, but first... Steamboat Geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin just erupted about two hours ago of me writing this. Right now it is 12.38 p.m. Pacific Time, which would be 1.38 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, February 25th, 2019. So about two hours ago or so, it did erupt as of the time I'm writing this. And it was the seventh eruption of 2019, which occurred at 1843 UTC on February 25th, 2019, which is also 11.43 a.m. Mountain Time, same date. As of the most recent 7th eruption of 2019, Steamboat Geyser still is producing much lower amplitudes than it did in 2018. Regardless of this, it seems Steamboat eruptions will continue into the foreseeable future. Also, something interesting to note is that the dominant frequencies of each eruption, which you can see down here, seem to be dropping as well. Because guys, remember on the older one, you can look at all these plots. Remember also, don't don't forget to go to Steamboat Geyser 2018, which shows every single helicorder and every single seismic plot to the Steamboat eruptions for 2018. I'm on the 2019 page right now, but you can see if you compare them to all the other seismic plots I have of Steamboat eruptions, number one, they are smaller, yes. But number two, the frequencies are dropping which I thought was a very interesting. The dominant frequencies of the steamboat eruptions are now starting to remain around 20 hertz, whereas they used to remain around 35 hertz when they were a little bit stronger. I don't know exactly what that means because these are mainly surface vibrations, but we'll see where that goes. And by the way, steamboat is still holding its near weekly schedule and will likely erupt again around March 4th, 2019. Stay tuned for more. The seventh eruption of 2019 is the 39th eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. And here is the helicopter from YNMHHZ, of course. And there it is right there. So let's move on. Here we are in my blog post. All right. In this post, I'm going to discuss and show the details of an extremely peculiar rapid-fire earthquake swarm that just recently struck north of Green River in southwest Wyoming. This earthquake swarm was a rapid-fire swarm, kind of like the one seen from time to time, near West Thumb Lake and Yellowstone Lake at Yellowstone, and is one of the craziest and coolest earthquake swarms I have ever had the chance to analyze. However, a big difference is that this swarm, with magnitudes reaching around 3.0 to 3.2, contained many low-frequency earthquakes. Sometimes, the low-frequency events were happening in such close proximity that they blended to create a type of low-frequency tremor, which is actually what volcanic tremor is theorized to be made of. Multiple low-frequency earthquakes happening over and over and over and over and over again, you can't tell them apart and then look like a tremor. That is what certain volcanic tremor episodes have been theorized to be. It is highly peculiar this type of earthquake swarm, with these magnitudes and this amount of energy, would even dare to strike in southwest Wyoming. This was for sure a strange one, and this post will detail as much as possible. Please click the title of this post or read more to continue if you have not done so already. Okay. Now, I just want to let you guys know there are a bunch of fracking operations and mines in this area. 
But according to the waveform characteristics as you're about to see, and the fact that they traveled hundreds of miles in a very short period of time shows two things. One, this is not mining or quarry activity. And number two, the depths of the events are extremely, extremely wrong, as you will see in just a second. But here is the location of the earthquake swarm along with the closest seismic stations. So around noon mountain time on February 22nd, 2019, an extremely energetic and peculiar earthquake swarm struck just to the northwest of Green River in the southwestern section of Wyoming. This location is an extremely strange location for an earthquake swarm, especially a rapid fire swarm such as this one. This earthquake swarm is for sure one of the craziest and coolest earthquake swarms I have ever analyzed. Well, at least so far. Well, you know, except for the 2008-2009 dike intrusion of Yellowstone Lake. In the image directly above, you can see the location of the earthquake swarm in regards to four of the closest seismic stations. All four are in the UU network, GAWY, BRWY, SVWY, and FMC. As you will see within the plots below, this earthquake swarm contained mainly low-frequency earthquakes, with some of them occurring so fast that it's sometimes blended to create a tremor-like event. This was a rapid fire swarm, much like the one seen around West Thumb Lake and Yellowstone Lake from time to time, and I have a button right after that sentence if you want to go see what those look like. This also contained many low frequency events that appeared to have very similar characteristics to the possible magma resonance spotted during the 2008-2009 dike intrusion of Yellowstone Lake, and as you'll notice I do have a second link right here to the dike intrusion of Yellowstone Lake. Scroll down to possible magma resonance because I do detail that on that page during that swarm. Also, please note that the depths of the earthquakes are likely to be extremely wrong. Now, why is that? Guys, do not take my word for it. This can easily, easily be done in Google Earth. Now, again, I highly doubt the depths are correct. One of the events reportedly struck a negative 3.3 kilometers in depth, which would be approximately 10,826 feet above sea level right in this location. Very interesting. However, if you check on Google Earth, the elevation where the epicenters are is about 6,400 feet above sea level. That means, if correct, these events transpired 4,400 feet above the surface of the Earth in this specific location right here. That is not possible, guys. Plus, as you are about to see in a second, these events even traveled hundreds of miles, showing up on seismic stations in Yellowstone Caldera and other areas as well, so we know for a fact that these events did strike underground somewhere. We know that for a fact because of how they radiated away from their source, kind of like a ripple in a pond, once again. But it traveled a very great distance in a very short time period. Sadly, I don't think the depths will ever be accurately constrained since these were the wackiest low frequency earthquakes ever. Also, there were many, many, many more of these strange low frequency earthquakes after the time period allotted in the description and plots below. It is entirely possible this strange swarm is still continuing but in a diminished form. However, since this happened this fast, it is likely it will happen again. I am currently contacting professionals to see what their take on this event was. I personally believe this was not tectonic, hydrothermal, or mine activity. That is due to the characteristics of the waveforms and the strength of the events compared to how fast they occurred, especially how far they traveled. Now you will notice many of the events occurred in extremely rapid succession. In the plots below, it is almost impossible to view only one event due to how many are occurring. The energy of this swarm was impressive for the types of earthquakes that made up the swarm. Overall, this was a good-sized low-frequency earthquake swarm with possibly some very low-frequency events thrown in the mix. This swarm occurred on February 22, 2019, and info about the swarm is shown below. Alright guys, here is my personal, very quick, preliminary analysis of this swarm. The main burst of the swarm on February 22, 2019 in southwest Wyoming started around 1951 UTC and ended around 2058 UTC. Although I have the time period of the swarm stated directly here, there were many more events after the main burst in seismicity. This earthquake swarm was extremely peculiar. In regards to its energy and how often the events transpire, it is similar to the rapid fire swarms seen around West Thumb Lake and Yellowstone Lake from time to time. Even though this earthquake swarm did contain some events with higher frequencies, most are still considered low frequency earthquakes. Also, some of the events that seem to be tremor may be multiple events occurring in such rapid succession that you cannot tell them apart. 
The total estimated earthquake count right here only counts the events within the time period stated right here. Now the total earthquake count, which includes even the tiniest events, is about 85 of these strange low frequency earthquakes in this time period allotted. Now, again, if many of these were earthquakes, it is likely this number is somewhat higher for the time period above because it was kind of hard to separate some of the earthquakes as they were occurring in just such rapid succession. I mean, just over and over and over and over again. The reported count is six. Yeah, they only reported six, and I know they could have done a little bit better on that swarm, guys. Largest amplitude from GAWY HHC, which is the closest station, was 169,170 at the highest peak. The USGS earthquake map of this swarm, you can click that button if you want to go see the reported earthquakes. So below I will show five helicorder charts. Four of them will be from the four closest seismic stations and the last one will be from MCID at Yellowstone, which picked up these events quite well. The chance that any of these were occurring at or above the surface is basically zero now. After that, I will show some random images and then I will show the USGS event pages to two select events along with the custom plots I made. Then I'll detail much of the swarm from the time period stated above. I will not be able to show every single event within the plots that I generate, but I will show a lot of them. Remember to always read chart labels first and any captions beneath any images. So again, here's MC here. Oh, 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 let's go back. Here's MCID. First off, you can see them right here. This is uh, part of the swarm showing up on MCID right here as well. And let's go forward. And here is the earthquake. Notice it does just from a quick look. It just looks like a normal rapid fire, high frequency earthquake swarm that is seen in Yellowstone from time to time, right? But when you actually zoom in on the waveforms, which is that, this is why seismic analysis is, uh, is very important, excuse me. That's why it's very important, guys. Because you wouldn't know that these were low frequency earthquakes just by looking at the helicorders, huh? So let's go forward. Go forward. And here's the second closest station to the swarm. Still picking them up quite well. And then, of course, on MCID, it does show on here as well. So let's scroll down just real quick. Okay. This is a custom three-plot image detailing the most energetic portion of the February 22nd, 2019 Rapid Fire Swarm in southwest Wyoming. Don't really rely on this much, except you can use the amplitude count on the left. But this, you look at the spectrogram, guys. Look at how many events. And some of these that look like one event, like this kind of looks like one event, right? No, those are many, many events happening very, very fast. So let's get into it and look at the dominant frequencies of the entire swarm. Not really going past three to four hertz, guys. Definitely low frequency events, that's for sure. And you'll see that with the waveforms below. Now let's scroll down just real quick. Check this out right here. This is a three-plot image detailing how many of the earthquakes in this swarm were strong enough to be detect detected excuse me, quite well on MCID and other stations at Yellowstone Caldera. This was an insane swarm, not because of the magnitudes or energy, but because of their characteristics. Now, this is the data stream from five seismic stations. You can see GAWY, BRWY, SVWY, FMC, and MCID at Yellowstone is right down here. Remember, MCID is pretty dang far away from this swarm, guys. So again, this is the data stream from those five seismic stations, four being the ones closest to the swarm, and MCID, of course, being at Yellowstone. Again, this was the most active part of the swarm, but many low-frequency earthquakes still continued a long time after this time period. And you could see these bursts in low-frequency earthquakes did show up on MCID, which is a great distance away, guys. So that right there is proof that these did not occur above ground, guys. Because it would have, if this occurred 4,400 feet above the ground, or even right at the surface, it would have lost a lot of its energy. It wouldn't have even reached MCID at all. So this is another aspect of the proof that these did occur a little bit deeper. Personally, I'm thinking deeper than 4 kilometers in depth from the surface. I'm thinking it's definitely going to be deeper than four kilometers. That's for sure. Here's some more seismograms of a random part of the swarm via the program waves. Notice the rapid fire characteristics, many, 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 many low frequency events. And it's very interesting to note that a lot of the low frequency events started out with some higher frequencies and then the low frequency band came in. So I, I thought that was very interesting. This is the USGS event page to the largest reported earthquake of the low frequency rapid fire swarm. Remember the depths are all likely to be very, very wrong. 
No people reported feeling it yet, but it did have a shake map, which I thought was very interesting. Here's the shake map for the Magnitude 3.0 of what humans could have felt during the Magnitude 3.0, right there. This is a three-plot image generated by myself for the largest reported event of the swarm. Note the crazy low-frequency characteristics for how strong it was. Again, some of these events were eerily reminiscent of the one seen on December 29, 2008 during the 2008-2009 dike intrusion of Yellowstone Lake. Look at those dominant low frequencies, guys. Do you see that? And look at that. What? Look at that perfect slope, almost, going all the way up to about, I'm going to say, that's what, 0 0.8 hertz? So it starts at about 0 0.6, which is very interesting. That's pretty low, guys. That's pretty low. And then goes up, and then ends probably around 3 hertz or so. But the strongest frequencies never go past, uh, I'm going to say, never go past 6 to 8 hertz, but they always stay below. And, and you know, some uh, very, 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 very strong low-frequency earthquakes can have much weaker frequencies going up to like 10, 15 hertz, but they all primarily stay within the 5 hertz range. Now here's the USGS event page for one of the events that was reportedly felt by one person. Now these event pages were saved about two to three days ago, so they might have changed just a little bit. Maybe someone reported feeling it, I don't know. But these are just from a couple days ago. One person actually reported feeling this not too far from the epicenter. Again, the depths are very wrong. And right here, is the magnitude 2.9 at negative 3.1 kilometers in depth. Again, the depth is wrong. We already proved, especially if you go on Google Earth and do this yourself, you can prove that it is very wrong. Again, note the dominant low frequencies with some barely, barely, very, very weak frequencies going up. But look at the waveforms. Do you see this? And from here to here is 6 seconds, 12 seconds from here to here. So... Yeah, guys, I think this swarm was pretty crazy. I really had a very fun time analyzing this stuff, so it was pretty cool. All right, so here we are in the slideshow. Below in this slideshow, I will detail a lot of the low-frequency earthquake swarm via the three plot images I like to generate. I will show them in slideshow format. The first slideshow contains 13 of these images, and so does the second slideshow. So what do you think this swarm was caused by? Let me know. Okay, so here's the first one. Supposedly, it was a magnitude 1.6, supposedly at negative 1.5 kilometers in depth. Now, negative 1.5 kilometers in depth is a little bit more believable, but according to all the other negative depth earthquakes that they reported, I think all of the depths for this earthquake were completely wrong, and I, I don't understand why, though. I don't understand why they haven't changed it yet, because we obviously know earthquakes and even events like this cannot occur 4,400 feet above the ground. So, I thought that was very interesting. So, let's skip forward, shall we? Ta now, I want you to pay attention to the dominant low frequencies on the spectrogram and spectroplot, and notice how some of the waveforms on the seismogram plots look almost perfectly spaced, right? Now, just because they're perfectly spaced doesn't mean it's caused by magmatic activity. For example, if you go in the Seismic Events drop-down menu, click Exotic Events, and look at some of the weird, crazy exotic events out there, you do see that there are perfectly spaced waveforms that do not have anything to do with magmatic activity. So it is possible, but personally, personally, I believe this was caused by magma somehow, from some small local magma chamber, but I don't know, though. I don't know. This swarm was weird, and it could be it could be anything. But at least we know it's not tectonic or hydrothermal in nature, that's for sure. Here's another one with the amplitudes just barely cut. Again, magnitude 3.0. Again, depth is wrong. Let's go forward. Look at this. This looks more like a volcanic tremor sequence, doesn't it? Or like some very emergent volcanic earthquake, right? So let's go forward. Amplitudes are slightly cut on here to draw out these smaller amplitudes. Again, dominant low frequencies. And look at the waveforms. Once again, pretty crazy, guys. Let's go forward. There's another one right here. Dominant low frequencies. Pretty much all of them, guys. And then we see frequencies start to get a little bit higher at the beginning of the events. But then we start to see some stronger, uh, I don't know, resonance? Maybe some type of magma resonance. Maybe the higher frequencies at the beginning are signaling that the rock is being broken apart. And then this kind of claps the crack that it just made. Kind of like a bell. I don't know. Could be. Or it could be some type of degassing. Like someone on uh, my last video I was talking about. They did 
say that it could be because of degassing. And at first, I thought that was not true. But now I'm starting to look at this, and this could be if, I'm saying if this is related to some type of magma event, it could be related to the degassing of the magma itself. That's what this resonance could be as it kind of resonates through the crack that it just made, right? I don't know. I don't know, but it's very interesting nonetheless. And look at these waveforms. Do you see this? Do you see that? Obviously, the characteristics are much different, but from here to here, doesn't it kind of look like the Mayotte event? Remember that strange seismic event that even National Geographic didn't know what it was on November 11th, 2018? Here's another event. Look at the dominant low frequencies, guys. Look at that. That is so crazy. Here's another one. What the heck caused this? And look at how freaking strong they are compared to their frequencies, guys. Very surprising how strong this was. Very, very, very surprising, that's for sure. Look at that. Now this right here, look at this. This definitely looks like some type of weak harmonic tremor, guys. I'm not saying it is, but I'm just saying I do not... I, 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 <laughs> this is crazy. I would not expect to see anything like this in southwest Wyoming. I'd expect to see something like this maybe during extreme, extreme uplift at Yellowstone or maybe at Mount Vinyamina or Mount Etna or maybe some of the volcanoes in Iceland that are active, maybe Mount St. Helens during dome growth. But I never would expect to see this in southwest Wyoming. Very, very intriguing. Dominant frequencies, again, do not really go past 3 hertz. They start very low too, which I thought was very interesting. Let's go forward. I have no idea what this is. Look at the many events that seems to be high frequency, low frequency, high frequency, low frequency, high frequency, low frequency, kind of over and over and over again. So I thought that was very interesting. And again, some people think it could have been some type of mine accident or mine blast. Number one, it lasted too long. If it was a mine accident, it would not have lasted almost an hour or over an hour. And number two, quarry blasts or mine blasts uh, maybe they're building a new mine but then again these are happening far too quick uh you don't do them that quick at a quarry or a mine like one every five seconds or so I, I don't know i don't know but we're just checking them out we're learning oh and then it restarted okay so let's go to the second slideshow which continues look at that guys look at that i would definitely be intrigued if i saw this at yellowstone Notice, it looks like a normal high-frequency earthquake at the beginning, right? And then it dies down, and then this appears. My goodness. And then the swarm starts to turn into these, right here. Just like we just saw. So the swarm did change a little bit. The characteristics did change. My goodness. This looks like an actual real earthquake, but still some of the same low-frequency processes are still taking place. You can see another event right there. Let's go forward. This is one of my favorite plots of the swarm. I mean, it's not a crazy event, but just look at it. I mean, it's so perfectly spaced. Definitely some harmonic rhythm right there. And here's another very tiny event with what appears to be some type of low frequency background tremor, but I don't know if that is, that could have to do with the background microseisms on a broadband station. I am unsure. Here's another event right here. Again, look at the perfect waveform spacings on these events, guys. And again, the dominant low frequencies. Always got to look out for events occurring beneath the 5 hertz line. And here, what looks like two low-frequency events, these are almost exactly like the events that occurred during the 2008-2009 dike intrusion of Yellowstone Lake. Okay, and here's some more events, uh, some higher frequencies, and then some lower frequencies as well. Let's go forward, and I think I'm starting over again, aren't I? I don't know, but here's a strong low-frequency earthquake, possibly can be considered a very low-frequency earthquake, a VLF. Possibly, I don't know. But again, this earthquake swarm was extremely, extremely peculiar. And I definitely had a really fun time analyzing it, that's for sure. Okay, one last thing on an additional note. It seems there was an interesting increase in SO2 emissions, basically in the same area as the earthquake swarm, just as the swarm was peaking and calming. Check it out. Click here to visit a video on YouTube. Okay, so I already added this video to YouTube, and it is the video that is just before this one that you're watching right now. It's the most previous one. So I'm not going to show this right now for sake of time, but if you want to see the SO2 increase in the same area as the swarm, basically in the same time frame too, then please just go to my YouTube channel, click videos, and look at the most recent video just prior to this one. 
It is snowing so hard at Yellowstone right now. Wow. So here we are back at the Old Faithful webcam pointing towards the Upper Geyser Basin. It seems this earthquake swarm that struck north of Green River, Wyoming was a rapid fire earthquake swarm with many peculiar low frequency events. Not surprisingly, this earthquake swarm was severely underreported and even the depths of the events were extremely incorrect. Again, these events uh, supposedly occurred 4,400 feet above the ground, which is impossible. They would not have shown on stations over 100 miles away in a short period of time. That proves that these events did occur much deeper than they stated, probably much deeper than 4 kilometers at the minimum. Let me know what you think of this swarm. There are many possibilities as to the cause, but tectonic or hydrothermal activity is basically out of the question. I personally believe this has to do with some type of magma intrusion event. However, there are many problems with that theory, such as how did the magma reach this spot without any precursor swarms from the original chamber? Well, if this was caused by magma, that probably means it could have been from a tiny local chamber, well, maybe tiny, I don't know, it could be bigger, but a local chamber that was already in the area that nobody knew about. Of course, it could be related to mining activity, but these definitely were not quarry or mine blasts due to the sheer amount of them occurring in such rapid succession, among other characteristics. Maybe it was a mine blast gone awry that caused the entire system to collapse. Again, that makes no sense because the waveform characteristics are not indicative of such an event, and the swarm did last a good amount of time. Regardless of cause, this swarm was one of the coolest swarms I've ever analyzed. Stay tuned for more, and my next video will be about a certain page on my website to aid people who have a harder time reading, or just those who prefer watching videos. I hope you all had a great day, and God bless. Remember, the truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. Never take my word for it, never take another YouTuber's word for it, and never take the professional's word for it 100%. Always do some digging on your own. Ben Ferriolo, signing off.